Hello everyone! In this video, I'm going to tell you who I believe are the top 10 best creatures currently in Ark Survival Ascended. Now, starting off at number 1, and this is not in any particular order, number 1 is the Otter. Easily the most overpowered shoulder pat in the game. It is a mobile heater and an air conditioner. This little creature grants massive boost to both hyper and hypothermal resistance. It not only insulates you, but if you've got a couple of them on the ground and you drop an egg nearby, they'll actually incubate and hatch the egg as well. Now, leveling up their melee will also further increase the resistances that the otter provides. Also, they're the only creature in all of Ark that can carry more than one artifact. So you can go caving, grab the artifact, wait for it to respawn, and then grab another, and you can save yourself one or two extra trips into that cave. Plus, they will provide the majority of the resistances that you need for the majority of the caves you go into. Lastly, it can also be commanded to consume fish. And when it does eat that fish, there is a chance that we'll find silica pearls and even a small chance to find black pearls. And it does an adorable little animation when it does find those pearls. It will actually walk up to you with it in its mouth or holding it, presenting it to you. And occasionally you'll actually find it swimming on its back, carrying those pearls towards you. And moving on to number two is the Argentavis or the Argy. Truly the pinnacle of the mid game. Now it is a bit slower than the PT you would have tamed prior, but it has significantly more stamina and more weight meaning it's far better for assisting with resource gathering. Additionally, in single player and non-official servers, you can go through and use the RG to pick up quite a few creatures for teaming and resource gathering purposes. An example would be being able to hold a dodic while it farms a stone or dropping a creature into a taming pen. They can also use their talons to pick up another person, allowing a tribemate to fly with you. Now their saddle also acts as a mobile smithy, so you can craft on the go, and if you ever need something repaired that needs a smithy, you can just keep a few extra materials in your RG's inventory and repair whatever it is that you need. Lastly is their health regen. It's amazing for battling, and it makes it difficult to not want to use them for most things post team just because they are so multi-purposed all right and now that brings us to number three the therizino the ultimate boss slayer now therizino is one of if not the most well-rounded creatures for boss fights they have a slightly smaller stature than rex's but they hit just as hard now when it comes to harvesting, this creature is also one of the most versatile creatures out there. When you live up the Therizino, you gain a harvesting level. You then need to go back in your menu for the Therizino and apply those harvesting levels. And then you can select Delicate or Power. Delicate will go through and improve your gathering from bushes, flower nodes, hide, chitin, and organic polymer. Whereas Power Harvesting improves gathering from trees and corpses. But hide and chitin is still better with Delicate. This would mainly be used for trees for thatch and wood rare mushrooms, as well as meat and silk. So all in all, they just gather so many different items and they excel at it and they're great for boss fights. You definitely want one of these guys on your team. And that brings me to number four, the Baryonyx, the Phantom of the Rivers. Now, if you go into water anywhere near a berry, more often than not, you will immediately get dismounted and you'll probably cease to exist. And that is because the Baryonyx is something special that most creatures do not. It has an AOE crowd control move when it's underwater. It has the ability to swing its tail while underwater and stun all surrounding enemies. Now, there are very few creatures in the game who you can tame that can straight up stun multiple enemies at once. Then once everyone is stunned, you can easily swim away or just eat them all while they sit still. The stun can also be used on basically anything that comes out of the water, as well as water creatures like the infamous jellyfish. Now, berries also heal exceptionally quick. Most water creatures like the Megalodon only heal by 2 HP when you force feed them fish. And they actually heal faster when they're fed regular meat. They heal by 5, making it kind of difficult when you're exploring, to go through and recover, or even when you're caving. But if you force feed a berry fish meat, then they actually heal for around 8 through 9 health for each piece that they eat. So they can recover a whole lot faster and get back into the fight than the majority of the water creatures. Now the berry is also quite quick and can jump. And for that reason, and every other reason mentioned here, is why that berry is considered not only one of the best caving creatures, but in general one of the best creatures in all of Ark, and why they made themselves onto this list. Which brings me over to number 5, the Thyla, or the Bloodthirsty Super Kitty. Now the Thyla has the strongest bite of any land mammal, and its sharp teeth cause a bleed ability that sets its damage far above most. It is far more effective to use a Thyla against Alphas, Titanosaurus, Gigas, and Deathworms than it is to use a high level Rex. The bleed ability does 1% of the enemy's total health per second, for 5 seconds. So if you're fighting a level 1 Titanosaur, which has 230,000 health, then each bite would inflict 2300 bleed damage. Now that is on top of the actual damage your bite does. Now not bearing any unforeseen circumstances or getting arced, this means you could technically kill and defeat a Titanosaur in just a few minutes using a Thyla, just to ensure that the final hit that happens is from the bite 
and not from the bleed, otherwise you will not get the experience that comes with that kill. Now Thylas also have the ability to jump quite far, and they can climb walls or trees that have less than a 90 degree angle. Now Thylas may be hard hitters, but they're also great for caving if the size of the cave can accommodate them. All right, now we have hit the halfway mark, so if you are enjoying the video, then consider leaving a like and subscribing if you're not already. And now that brings us to number six, the Rhino or the Insect Overlord. Now, the Rhino was actually the last creature that was added to Arc Survival Evolved. It is far more common to find them now in ASA than it was in ASC. They are literally a flying air fortress. They can practically pick up all but the largest of creatures. And they also have a unique skill set that revolves around resin. They turn one sap into resin. And then they can use that resin for different abilities. The first ability is to provide additional defensive capabilities. They go through and actually provide an exterior shell, nullifying some of the damage, and it has a really cool animation with it. Now, they can also go through and throw giant globs at enemies, and that deals a good amount of damage. And they can also throw a thinner version of that resin, kind of like a machine gun as well. Um, and some of these will actually deal damage, and some of them will actually stop it in their tracks. Now, additionally, you can practically glue anything to this creature's hard shell and then have them move around with it. You can move things like vaults if you don't like where you place them and don't want the inventory to fall over on the floor when you pick it up. Now, the only downside is that they cannot be bred, and taming can be a pain when looking for a high-level one. Now, the upside for taming is, is if you accidentally get a creature to have the eggs laid in it, and you decide you don't want to do it at the last minute, then you can destroy that creature in a cryopod, and it will freeze the larva, and then that creature will no longer die, so you do kind of have a way out of the taming process if you so desire. Now, lastly here, they can also swim quite quickly, and they can attack underwater. Now, unfortunately, they cannot grab creatures underwater, but they do quite a bit of damage, and they are very fast. They truly are a jack-of-all-trades creature. And that brings us to number seven, the Utyrannus, the Supreme Dino General. Now, it is rare to ever see a boss fight in Ark take place without having a UD there. Now, while they may not have a crazy amount of abilities like other creatures on this list, the UD excels at what it does have. When you use the Courage War, it buffs nearby allies, granting 25% increased damage and 20% damage resistance. Now, combining this war with creatures who are imprinted or have mate boost can make for some crazy damage in boss fights. Now, I am sure you've all heard the phrase, I think he just shit himself. Well, that is the Utyrannus' way of life. When you take a tamed UD out in the wild and you use the Intimidation Roar, you will make all wild creatures that are affected by the roar drop a big pile of dung, and then they all run away. And then we as survivors get to be the lucky ones and hop on down, do the dirty work, and collect up our newfound fertilizer. Now, a fun last little tip here with the Intimidation War secret ability is the Intimidation War causes creatures to have a debuff. They take 50% increased damage and deal 30% less damage. So if you can fear Roar Dino and then have them trapped in an area, you can actually tame them quicker as your darts are going to be inflicting more torpor damage making taming a lot easier, using less resources, and taking less time. All right, now that brings us to number eight, the Procoptodon. Now, the Procoptodon's pouch can hold many creatures, baby dinos, and survivors. Also, it's nice to be able to use a very versatile travel mount, as it's quite easy to miss things on the ground when you're on a flyer far up above. The majority of land dinos tend to get stuck on uneven ground or near hilltops or cliffs, but the Procoptodon just jumps right over and continues its journey. And then when it does jump, it does not really need to consider where it's going, or fall damage as it is significantly negated. They are also extremely agile and can hop both forwards and backwards. Due to their speed, they are excellent at kiting and escaping hostile creatures. Now, you know how I mentioned being able to carry creatures? Well, you can actually go through and pet a Lystrosaurus and then carry it around with you in its pouch. This will provide you with a mobile experience boost when you are out exploring. Now, when it comes to resource gathering, they are also pretty versatile. They can gather thatch and wood from trees, and cactus sap and thatch from cactus on scorched earth, and berries from bushes. Now, when it comes to being a parrot, the Procoptodon mom knows best. When a Procoptodon female is holding a baby in its pouch, when you go to imprint the baby, it will receive double affinity for imprinting. This can make imprinting and raising dinos in the mid-game significantly easier. And lastly, when it comes to combat for our kangaroo friend, they do not deal significant damage, but they do have a deadly knockback that sends creatures flying. Being able to use your weapon as well while mounted makes dealing with wild creatures and taming a breeze. And that brings us over to number eight, the Megatherium. Now, these sloth-like creatures are the most chill large creatures in all of Ark, at least until it sees an insect. Then all hell breaks loose and it goes absolutely bonkers. Also, the Megatherium has a very high torpor, so they're a lot less likely to get knocked out than other creatures. Now, this, among many other reasons, is why they are great against the Broodmother. This could also mean that they could be great against the Manticore. I don't know if that has been tested. That sounds like a future video to me. All right. 
And moving on here, once a Megatherium kills an insect, they do get a buff called Insect Killer, which causes their damage to multiply by 250% to any target for 120 seconds, and this is multiplicative with their passive 150% multiplier against bugs, meaning they can get up to 375% more damage against bugs. In addition to this damage, they also reduce all damage by 75% when this buff is active. Now, they don't exactly fit into caves, so they can't really shine there, but they are great for the Broodmother boss fight, possibly the Manticore fight, and they can certainly shred through death worms to help you get all the black pearls you ever need for your tech gear. Now, when it comes to harvesting, they can harvest berries and fiber from bushes, thatch and wood from trees, and meat and chitin from corpses. Now, their chitin harvesting ability is especially helpful on maps like Scorched Earth, where there are no beavers, because you can use that chitin to make all the spending paste you'll ever need. And that brings me to number 10, the Wyvern. I mean, one, it's a freaking dragon. That's pretty cool if you ask me. And the fact that there are three different versions definitely helps it out. And they introduced elements into Ark through the Wyverns. Again, that's pretty cool. But their special abilities are primarily to deal damage or knock someone out. Now, the Fire Wyvern is great for dealing damage over time with its fire attack, similar to that of the Thylas Bleed attack. So these are going to be great against things like Gigas and Deathworms as a percentage-based and or dot attack. Uh, so overall, I think the Fire Wyvern probably has the most versatility when it comes to damage and what you can do with it outside of boss fights. Now, the Lightning Wyvern technically does the most overall damage if you can control the blasts, so they can also be really good for bursting targets down, and then the Poison Wyvern shoots a toxic homing missile. Now, I really like the poison concept. I just wish it did actual poison damage like the Fire Wyvern, or more torpor damage they can actually use to knock creatures out and tame them. I think that would just give it a little bit more picking power over the other two. Now, additionally, all three of them do get a one-up to the Rex, and then they do have some extra abilities. They can all use an ability that causes them to flap their wings, which pushes creatures in front of them backwards by quite a bit. And the same ability can be used to harvest wood and thatch from trees and cactus sap from cactuses. I will say that the wood is very, very minimal. Now, Wyverns also have the ability to pick up quite a few creatures, which you can either just use a quick meal on the go, or you can use it for teaming purposes. Now, the last thing that Wyverns have going for is that its max base level is higher than every other creature currently in Ark. You can find eggs up to level 190. All right, that concludes the top 10 creatures in Ark Survival Ascendant at this time. Let me know down below in the comments if you agree, and if not, what your opinion is. Also, let me know if you want to see me do a top 10 worst creatures in Ark. In the meantime, we are all preparing for the release of the center. If you want a refresher for the map, or want to know the key to having a great start in the early game, then I recommend check out this video here.